Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Let It Die. So, the last episode, that was a long episode of me doing nothing but talking constantly about all kinds of stats in the game. I touched upon the decals influencing your, uh, your you know, character setup, your uh, gear, and how you can tell active decals from passive decals, decals that are no longer working. One of the first decals that can be active and passive that you will, uh, I guess, see in the game will be the living on the edge. Just gonna go and have a, a quick look. So, living on the edge costs 11,000. I don't want to purchase it. But uh, this decal will show as normal when you equip it. And if you were to take damage up to one health, uh, this decal will stop fatal damage and leave you at one HP. But you'll also tell the decal is spent, the decal's effect is over, as it will become uh, transparent, kind of transparent. Kind of like um, the first decal in my decal setup becomes transparent when I equip to a non-DOD uh, non DOD weapon. Because I'm wearing nothing DOD, the DOD strength increaser no longer active, as you can see. Uh, yeah, I found that complicated uh, when I uh, got into the game uh, a while ago. Almost a year ago, actually. Anyway, uh, in this episode, we're gonna go and uh, say hello to our uh, friendly neighborhood uh, giant mutant hamster. See if he's got some uh, Candle Wolf Black for us. Because I'm going to need that to upgrade one of my main weapons in a Let's Play. Uh, being the sword. Sword. Long sword. Uh, long sword S. Uh, Dragon Bluster Sword. Dragon Bluster Sword uh, S. And, uh, yeah. Let's see. Am I prepared? Uh, I've got too many things on me. I'm going to get rid of some of this. Also, I stated some of the rules I've put on this Let's Play in the previous episode. I'd like this Let's Play to be also a functional guide. I don't want to have any equipment that people cannot obtain otherwise. So, um, this episode kind of doesn't count. It doesn't count because this is kind of like a farming episode. It's, uh, it's between progression, it's... Uh, it's an example of uh, what I'm doing between videos, farming for, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff, materials. I've also discovered many blueprints. Unfortunately, I cannot capture everything I do in the game because, you know, the series would be 500 episodes long, maybe 1,000 episodes, who knows? It could be infinitely long because, yeah, there's a lot of blueprints in this game and I do find, unfortunately, a lot of these between episodes that I cannot, you know, that I will have not shown off getting. Like I've killed a couple of chargers, there have been a lot of charger kills, they've dropped a lot of their blueprints, and I've found some other blueprints in the Candle Wolf Zone that haven't been shown off yet. A masterpiece has been born. Awesome. Spectacular. I'm not going to be using those goggles on progression because, uh, yeah. People won't have access to that in a few uh, weeks from now. Anyway, uh, some of the things I've unlocked have been, I guess, the welding gun, the drill arm from the, the chemical agent charger. What else has there been? I guess I got the sniper recently. I've got the World of Tank Assault Rifle, I'm leveling that. Eww, what else is there? Don't know if the Flame Wand is new, probably not. Cleaver Saber has been upgraded for the purpose of, well, there's a quest requiring kill uh, 30 enemies with an electric type weapon and you get a death medal. This is a good weapon to use for that. 
there you don't get easy well there's not many electric type weapons in the game but this is one you have relatively easy access to it's uh, Candlewolf onwards I don't think you get much electricity before Candlewolf hmm I may be wrong but I don't think so what else I guess I got a couple of uh, warrior helmets uh, warrior armor bits from the the one uh, charger in Candlewolf and I got some blitz from the uh, blitz charger Candle, uh, the uh, warrior uh, armor I don't have the legs from the warrior yet uh, also no more blitz gear so I only have the helmet which arguably is the the one you'd want to get anyway well I've been burning the midlight oil on uh, farming for resources because I want to get everything done in this anniversary event for these extra boss metals they've been awarding us I'd like to upgrade the longsword fully I'd like to upgrade the psycho uh, I want everything at just below red metal requirements uh, to yeah before I tackle the next couple of bosses in other words I want to be you know properly upgraded for the task at hand. Of course I'm doing this with the let's play in mind and with uh, a lot of pre-knowledge of what the future of this let's play and of the game holds. Now um, these will be future worries for anyone not uh, this knowledgeable in the game. Uh, as I'd recommend to many people uh, pick a armor set and stick to it. Level up one set and make it your main armor and uh, don't worry about upgrading many different armor sets because the most important thing is just having an armor upgraded as much as possible. It doesn't matter if you're weak to a certain element, just bear your weaknesses in mind and make sure you don't get hit as much with that element. But uh, not every armor is weak to everything so you know you won't be uh, overly handicapped for wearing any type of gear most of the gear in the game kind of equals out at this level anyway it's only at the very end game that you have to worry about uh, you know what uh, actual armor set you're wearing because unfortunately the tier 4 doesn't all equal out some sets are actually much stronger than others well that is an unfortunate revelation anyway let's go and say hello to uh, go to 9 where are you hiding edges and gmap just confirming that I've got the right setup. Lots of damage. Yep, he doesn't stand a chance. Farming go to nine is is probably the easiest of the boss, uh, bosses to farm on. If you're wanting uh, Candlewolf uh, Black, uh, go to 923 floor is the perfect target. Uh, every different mid boss drops a different type of uh, boss drop metal. They'll drop very specifically their like one uh, type of metal. Uh, Cohen will always drop DOD. Uh, Goto will always drop Candlewolf. Uh, future boss we haven't seen yet, who shall not be named, will always drop milk, and uh, Jin Dai will always drop uh, War Ensemble metal types, depending on which uh, tier of floors you're fighting Jin Dai. You're fighting the floor 6 Jin Dai, it'll be War Ensemble Blue. Fighting the floor 16 Jin Dai, it'll be War Ensemble Green. Fighting the floor 28, wait, floor 26, Jin Dai. I don't know which side she's on, I think she's on the right. Uh, yeah, War Ensemble Black. You know, there's a trend here. So if you need, uh, if you need Candle Wolf Black to upgrade something, then you know who you have to uh, go and try and get the material from. Anyway, let's see how well this goes. Hmm. 
Okay. Our stamina is not great. Got a bit of damage in there. Alright, as you can see we've already lost superhero damage buff. But we do recover a little bit from Mosquito. Not enough to... well, we are topped off again, so... I spoke too soon. Enough to top us off for health. And the Goto is generous. Dropping the uh, boss medal. We need to upgrade the sword. Long sword. Oh, is this the wrong way? Nope. I'm just checking something. I believe Goto guards the... Uh, he guards the uh, green escalator up. Now that we've killed him, might as well go and have a look. Like when defeating bosses in Let It Die, I'd highly recommend continuing on a little bit further than the boss, unlocking any gates behind them, so those are unlocked and you don't have to get into the nasty situation where uh, you cannot return because you forgot to unlock the gate, because uh, returning to the waiting room will respawn the boss and you have to kill him over again to uh, unlock the gates they're guarding. But it looks like the purple gate that is still locked is uh, the other escalator up, not guarded by Goto. So head back to the waiting room. I mentioned that Goto is the easiest mid-boss to farm, and um, I guess that's my opinion. But uh, I think he's the easiest one to farm. He's definitely the closest to most elevators from all the mid-bosses as a, a theme throughout the game, kind of. Like you've got a couple of floors where he's just on the elevator floor. Of course the early mid-bosses, most of them are on the elevator floor, but... He's never far from... Uh, he's, he's, never, he's never difficult to travel to. And I do find his moveset easy to uh, deal with compared to some bosses. Okay, gonna have a look and see if we can upgrade that longsword yet. Welcome. Okay, not yet. I need uh, two candle of black, although I may have a quick look at what I've got over here. Except, not with this fighter. Going to need a collector to pick up all that. Quickly swap out. Uh, you have too much on you. You kind of also do. Just gonna deposit all of this stuff in the bank. Whoops. Still got a lot on you, but I guess it's fine. Again, the Camus is a very efficient weapon of clearing the first 10 floors, or even the first 20 floors of the tower, especially as your fighter level increases. You'll probably one-shot most Screamers and uh, Tubers. This fighter wearing the full set of World of Tanks, uh, Phantom Soldier and Camus. Pretty sharp. Nope, I don't need to interact with that. Needs this one. Okay, gimme gimme. All those good resources. The login bonus is something I very much don't care about. How much golden dragon shroom is that? That's too much golden dragon shroom. Oh my god, is that 10 golden dragon shroom? No, thank you. Well, I guess now that I've got them, I'll show off what Golden Dragon Shrooms do. And we just so happen to have a ranged weapon on us. If you uh, direct your uh, attention to the 
bottom left of the screen you can tell the ammo count on the Kamas weapon. If I eat the Dragon Shroom, it says in the description, infinite ammo, 40 seconds duration stacking. So I can eat a couple of these and at the bottom left you'll see the number of ammo disappears and turns into a lying down uh, hourglass sign, which is the sign for infinity. And you can shoot forever. Of course your weapon durability will go down normally. But, uh, yep, yeah, that is a very, uh, it's a useful mushroom for like one fight in particular I can think of. Uh, I guess you could use this strategy on bosses if you're a shooter class. You could enjoy the, uh, you know, very well upgraded Kamas, uh, infinite ammo against uh, maybe Top Floor's Cohen. It seems like a nice uh, punching bag, easy target to hit. Anyway, I've got all these uh, top grade resources through the uh, uh, anniversary quests. If you're following this Let's Play as a guide, you'll probably get it from floor 22, Kawabi, and uh, possibly boss kills. I mean, I haven't progressed through uh, Koen and Jindai on floor 26, but you know, all you really need is one decently upgraded weapon and one decently upgraded armor and maybe a class that's good at killing things like the uh, shooter or uh, striker. Just gonna quickly take out a weapon so I can plop in that last candle wolf. Store candle wolf. And I'll go to my, uh, I don't think I've uh, shown the uh, fighter freezer yet but I've changed the fighter freezer there's been some uh, you know between episodes upgrading going on this number hovering over the uh, you know the uh, the number code thing uh, that's how long it's still gonna take for me to upgrade the fighter freezer to its final tier which will allow me to have 10 fighters that's the maximum amount the final one costs 128k spliffium I got that from uh, spamming TDM fights in a war, with many opponents having quite a lot of spliffium just uh, ready to be uh, you know, redistributed. Let's see, uh, so we've got nine, and the temp fighter slot will be with us shortly. But uh, most of these fighters are actually like extended storage space for me. I'm only using the three first fighters. Two of them are collectors, one of them the striker, my boss killer, and from here on it's all uh, collectors. But these collectors are not for climbing the tower. These guys, as you can tell by their name, storage, storage plus, storage plus ultra, and just some random names that were given these people. Uh, they're all storing resources until I can accumulate enough death metals to get those thousand bank space that we need. The first one carries my rare mushrooms, the second one, the uh, tuber metals, third one carries floors 1 to 10 and floors uh, 11 to 20 resource type. The next one carries the floors uh, 21 to 30 and uh, 31 to 40 resource types and uh, I guess beyond as well because of the weird ridiculous login bonuses we've been getting lately you're able to get resources well beyond your normal reach so you know that's fine I guess the next one has the first two colors of boss drop resource the uh, blue metals green metals the last one last but not least has the highest grade uh, metal colors. I gave him black and uh, red, also purple. I managed to pick up this uh, this cheeky uh, purple piece on the hernia machine for the uh, hernia kill coin uh, offers. Don't know what I'll eventually use that on, but that's a 
absolute end game uh, material type right there, the purple metals. You won't get those off boss kills because there's no bosses. Uh, I guess. <laughs> Spoilers. Um, so, uh, the reds and the blacks should be uh, belonging to this guy. But I think I've deposited all the black metals in the bank for the moment, so I can, you know, use them as upgrade material. Because you cannot use upgrade materials that are on your storage fighters. The, um, the game won't recognize uh, resources stored in the fighter freezer uh, on fighters that are not your active fighter as usable resources. So when at this uh, upgrade uh, character here, he will not recognize any of those red medals we've got on our storage dude. As you can see, it says war red. I've got one. I guess I left one in the bank somewhere. But uh, I have much more than one red medal uh, for war. And he's not recognizing them because they're all stored on that uh, fighter in the fighter freezer. Anywho, looks like we've got two candle of black, which is good news. Gives us the first upgrade for the uh, Longsword S, making it the Longsword S plus one, increasing its damage output. And you can see it in the blue number at the bottom right. That's an increase, it's a positive number, positive change. Let's take a look. Takes 40 minutes to fully uh, research the next level, but that'll give us more than enough time to go and get two more kind of uh, blacks. Let me out. Dung beetle, stop rolling the world. And these golden dragon shrooms, I don't know if I want these. Do I want these? No, I don't think I do. You can just go to hell, from hell to hell, die or die. You, uh, you scumbag, you, you get what you deserve. Can you tell I'm not a fan of shooter weapons? Anyway, get back on my uh, boss killer. Skip that. And uh, should I take out some of these attack rooms? Uh, sure, why not? Make some bank space. I'll use one of these grilled crush rooms on every uh, fights with uh, Goto. Anything else I've got here lying around that I could make use of? Not exactly. I guess I could use a grilled life shoe. I've got more than enough of those. Golden beasts are he uh, full heal items, but uh, I kind of don't want to waste those. Not really worried about healing. I'm not worried too much about the boss damage either. Okay, I may not have pointed this out or made this clear yet, but I believe the drill arm is a very strong weapon to climb through the tower with, especially, uh, you know, where you'd get it, where you'd be able to upgrade it in Candlewolf onwards. Not sure if it'll still remain useful for 30 plus, but I got a sneaking suspicion the answer there is yes. This is a very strong weapon, very efficient, extremely durable, this attack is stupidly damaging. This one's pretty fun <laughs> and decent too. Armor breakage, multi-hit damage, all the good stuff. You can uh, you can burn out the uh, the motor if you use the the drill attack too long, and it's got like a few seconds cooldown, like four seconds or so, and then you can use it again, get the full combo, and it overheats. Cannot use it until it cools off. You can bypass this. If you swap through all your weapons, uh, you can use the weapon again. So use to overheat, swap through all the weapons. Oh, maybe I was too quick on that swap. Oh, hold on. Did they fix this? Ah, oh, no, no, no. I think this is a very specific glitch I'm creating for myself. One moment. I'm not lying, I swear, this does work. You're just not allowed to swap through the same weapon over and over again. You have to have at least one different weapon in the loop on uh, the side that you're swapping through. Or no weapon, like, uh, I'll show you, if you've got just this weapon equipped, 
use it until it overheats. It's overheated, cycle through, and you can use it again. See guys, I'm not lying. There we go. And that works for a couple of weapons which have uh, cooldown. Like there'll be a which uh, behaves in uh, much the same way. The weapon fully resets on uh, cycling through. And I'll just do a quick test. I hope we have time to go and say hello to uh, Goto again, but anyway, this is for science. Uh, I'll throw away this one for a sec. Okay, use until uh, overheat. Cannot use again. Trade to the next one. Still overheated, yep. Okay, use until overheat. Next one's also overheated. Cycle through a non-drill weapon and it's uh, reset. Drop you on the floor, pick you up. Dropping weapons, holding X and pressing left or right on the, uh, you know, the touch keys, the uh, the directional, the old school directional non-analog uh, buttons. Anyway, drill, drill, drill. Cool down. And drill, drill, drill. So you just have to cycle through a non-drill weapon to reset the cooldown. Which is cool. Very handy trick, very handy trick. Let's go say hello to Goto. Coming for you, Goto. Your uh, minutes are numbered. Uh, live it up where you can. I think the only downside to the really quick and efficient uh, Goto farming, because he's the easiest mid-boss to farm, is that you're not making any kill coins while farming him, generally. So you do have to, you know, mix that up with doing some other stuff, farming some kill coins. May have to farm kill coins before going on a uh, Goto farming binge. Or, of course, you could have the Express Pass, which lets you use the Golden Elevator for free elevator rides. But yeah, we're uh, we're not made of money, are we? So uh, I'm using the Discount Elevator. The attack buff. Goto is always left, starting from the elevator. Hello, Goto. What's up? Getting hungry. And again, if you've got too many uh, attack rooms, you can get him to do his charge against the wall by throwing an attack room on the floor. We'll go and eat it. And uh, go crazy. Candle of Black. Generous Goto. Generous hamster. Good boy. Still got a few seconds left on the attack buff. So yeah, this fighter is kind of overpowered as it stands. I'm not going to be uh, not going to be using this uh, decal setup for progression because I want to use decals that everyone has access to. Uh, the decals I'll be using will be the ones available through uh, skill stream trade and the ones available just for normal purchase. I will be holding off on using premiums unless they're premiums that have the same effect as the uh, normal purchasable decals. And then if they are, I won't stack them with the premium, non-premium stacking trick. Because that wouldn't be fair for anyone using this as a... Uh, uh, follow along guide. Anyway, uh, so this is what I'm doing between episodes. No Mingo head, didn't get any kill points. Well, that's that. Uh, RIP Giant Mutant Hamster, and see you guys on the next episode.